So welcome to another war game review from theplayersaid.com. My name's Alexander. And I'm Grant. And today we are taking a look at our kind of first impressions of Mark Simonich's Hannibal and Hamilcar. And this is the most recent edition from Phalanx. They did a Kickstarter in 2017 and I think this fulfilled in fulfilled early in 18. 18. So people have had this a while. It's got a lot of accolades. People was very well received. Um, it's a two-player historical war game. And we need to emphasize that it is historical. historical. Um, it's a point-to-point -point movement game, so there's no hex grid or anything like that. Um, you're just moving, there's kind of lines between different regions, and the regions are in larger provinces. And it's a game of um, area control, so to speak. Mm -hmm. You'll have your generals, which are these beautiful big miniatures, and you'll have stacks of units with them that you'll be trying to spread out or kind of do battles with. But you're doing that in order to clear out enemy troops so that you can lay um, your influence in those Politi areas. Political control, control markers, yeah. PC markers. The game also is card-driven. Yes. So it uses cards that have events and op points. Um, those are very. It's a very simple, though. It, it is. The, the events don't go off for your enemy when you use their event as an op. Yep. Because you, you can't use their event, but you... Some of them you can if they're dual. Yeah, right? so there's there's kind of Carthaginian events, which are blue. There's Roman events, red. red. And then there's dual ones, which are kind of... Blue little, and red. Yeah, you can... It's a little bit vague, those yeah. two. You know, a small thing here or there. Um, but it, it's either you do ops, which enables you to do two, three things, or you yeah. do the event, which is very self-explanatory. Yeah. Um, so, so I think that's a key. The ops only give you... You can only use your ops on three things. Yes, which I like. And yeah, that makes so it's it, not overly complex. Yeah, we've played a lot of, and I say a lot, Empire of the Sun is like Four the thousand way ways, yeah. other end of the spectrum where you can do so much with everything and there's a lot to do. This is, you use your ops to move one general and the ops determine who you can uh, yep. move. Or you use it to to raise a troop with a general in an area you control. And that's only... One card that has that symbol on it. Yes, it's and, a three card and only one unit. Yeah, it's so you, you're not recruiting three or four units at a time. You're recruiting one, or you use them to um, lay or uh, remove political influence. Yes, markers. That, yeah. That's it. So yeah. the majority of your cards, if you are not manipulating your generals, they can always be used to to, to kind of put out these counters and flip them and mm -hmm. move them or, or remove move them all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So, really, that's that's the crux of the game. It's not a massively complex game. The rulebook is quite big. It is. Especially yeah. for a game like this. And it's thick because there's a lot of space. The text is large, but there are a lot of rules. There are. And once you get through those, the gameplay itself, I don't feel it was that complex. No, I, I don't think overall the game is hard to understand. I think what it is is it's difficult to understand maybe what you are to be doing. Yeah, and how to do it well. Right. And that's they have a there's a playbook which that will guide which says, you through. Yeah. We need to read that a little bit more. And the well, so the playbook has some tutorials in it mm -hmm. where you set up, you know, four or five little spaces and it's like how to move well. Right. Efficiently. How to influence decently. Yeah. How to do these bits and pieces and then how to bring it all together. Yeah. Um but if you've played games like Washington's War. I think that's the game we felt was the that's most. Like, but I think We the People was like that too. Yeah, but we've never played that. No, but but We the People became Washington's yeah, War. Yeah, but it's it's ultimately it reminds me of that because yeah, you're moving your stacks around and you do want to do combat, but you're doing that to enable you to more efficiently put yeah. out these political control markers. The, the reason you're doing th there's a couple of reasons why you're doing combat. One, to inflict losses yes multiple losses on your enemy so that you can then the, the will of the people gets you know disrupted and they're like i don't want to continue these wars and they start losing you start losing control yeah. if i lose a battle and have a bunch of guys die four or five guys you're going to lose two or yeah. three markers ha half of my losses i have to remove political control yeah. markers from the board and this game is won or lost by the campaign is by political control each each of the um each of the regions, which are the, is a little spaces of region, yeah. 
is there's four or five makes a province, and that province, if you control it, is eff effectively a victory point. Right. And however many provinces you control at the end of the game, if you have the more challenge. than you, I win the game. Um, and that so really that's the game, and the combat is enabling you to do that. Better, well, and, right? and and that's one of the elements. What? Yeah. The, the other element is. With combat, you're trying to put pressure yes. on the other side to change their plans, change their designs, yes. force them to use resources to recruit, move up, prepare for battle, rather than doing rebellions in your area yes. and spending their resources on something they don't want to do. Yeah, and, and literally moving in. When you move in, you can drop guys off and they can stop yeah. flipping those yep. counters to your side. So those, those are the three stuff. real main reasons for combat. You are not going to win this game through force of arms. It's not, Meaning yeah, that's, you're not going to go out and wipe everybody out. You're going to go out and you're going to flip two or three key areas Force your opponent to do something they don't want to do. And then you can use that as then a springboard to launch more political campaigns. To get something campaigns, else. Yeah. Like that. yeah. And, and this is a historical war game. And that's one thing that we're going to keep coming back to because yeah. as the campaign goes on, that history is going to become evident. And, and history says that Carthage was destroyed. Yes. Right? The, the majority of this game is, the, is this, what is it called? I'm going to talk it up. It's the second... Punic War. Is it Punic? Yep. Okay. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I was going to say the wrong word. Second Punic War. Not Peloponnesian, that's no, Greek. That's definitely. Punic. And, and the, the Romans gathered their forces after Hannibal invaded in the north, and they, they basically struck back. trounced yeah. through Iberia and landed in Carthage, and they, yeah. they, they crushed it. So once again, this is a, a historical-oriented board game, war game, that focuses on the history of the combat. The Roman Empire was written historically into the record books because they defeated yes. Hannibal. And if they had lost to Hannibal, we may not have been talking about the Roman Empire. We would have been talking about Carthage. It, right? Yeah, at least to a much greater extent. Yeah. And and that aspect, that history is probably going to come out in almost every iteration, every time you play this. I don't, it's really going to take something special for Hannibal to run in there and and win some of these games. Particularly the, the later scenarios. You know, there's nine or ten scenarios. I think there's an overall I think nine scenarios of this campaign. It, it basically is kind of year by year. You know, the first scenario is all, what, eight turns? Three, four, five, mm. six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. First campaign's like nine. It's the all second's the like eight. The yeah. third's like seven. And it just gets worse and worse and worse. Red propag prop propagates all over the board yes. as you go through those scenarios. And and it's kind of interesting because they put notes, I think it's on scenario the last two. eight and nine, where it says Rome is favored. The first one says Rome is favored in this one because if you look on it, there's like 10 spaces that are controlled by Ham Hannibal, and the rest is Rome. And then number nine is like, they are heavily favored in this one yeah. because it's down to like four or five little spots. And the victory, because you play one turn, and the victory conditions at the end of that are, Just is don't there a blue piece on kill. the board? Yeah. Yes, they win. Survive the, this <laughs> round, and you win. And in fairness, it's a weird scenario, and I don't know why yeah. you ever played it. And I don't, <laughs> but so, so that... Yeah, that, that that's what we're we're meaning by we keep saying historical. Yeah, because it's going to end similarly to history almost ninety five percent of the time. I, yeah, I don't. And again, we've only played this the once, but right. I, and that's why we wanted to say this is a quick this review. Is a, First thoughts. initial stuff. I think you'd have a hard time winning as the Carthaginians in the campaign. You think? I do. I do think. That, no, no. I'm, I I'm sarcastically that. saying that. <laughs> Because it was funny, we were, I was so excited. You know, I was like, oh, I'm going to be Hannibal, I'm going to have these cool elephants, and I'm going to go over the Alps, and I'm going to go down Italia, and I'm going to I'm gonna kick some butt. Right? Yeah. I was feeling that. Man, after that first round, I said to myself, damn. Yeah. How am I going to do anything? The, the other thing that's very interesting, historically, it almost reminds me of the Battle of the Bulge. Historically, the Americans had air superiority. Now, there was some fog a couple yeah, of days that, was the that, was the that allowed the Germans to do whatever they wanted. But once that clears up, 
those P-38s are blowing up tigers and panthers and shooting up columns and that's kind of what you got here, right? You've got naval superiority by the Romans. There weren't there weren't air power in this era, no, right? But, I but it was the naval that I could ever have wanted. So the, the, why that is important it is it's very very difficult for Hannibal to move to do naval movement and attack Italy or even Sardinica, Sard Sardinia or Corsica or S Sicily. Very difficult. You have to roll a die. There's a lot of modifiers against yeah, you. and it's easy to, for you to like lose all your forces. Or just to have to return home, which you yeah. spent a very expensive think, time to do. I think it. one time I did that, and I was sent back. At least I didn't sink yeah, that was and the, lose that those was the four very or first five. Time you yeah. it. So that, that's something you got to deal with, and that's not going to change. Nope. There are very few cards. There are some event cards. So there's, yeah, there's three, three cards that give you modifiers to that roll. Which actually make that very doable. The problem is, is it's random, and I and I got the two that came up. I had them, and yeah. I'm like, sweet, I'll throw. Them I away. think I got one Not of them at me. the end of the game, and it's like it's too late. Yep. But yeah, so there are some cards in there. I like that because you can overcome that naval superiority. And if you get that early, it can make a it difference. It can make a difference. But I would have made you sustaining that is going to be difficult. I think for the Carthaginians, that's the difference. Sustaining it, doing it in bursts, where hey, I have some great cards. I've got the advantage. I'm going to take over. Sicily, and I'm going to take over Corsica, and I'm really going to make you work. And even one of these, your Macedonian alliance, Yeah, you play that, you get this out, you take that out of the box, and you put in the one that breaks that alliance. So right. At some point, that's going to it's go It's going to come back up. Yep. That was an interesting element. Which is neat that element. that's there, Yeah. But... I like that about these card-driven yeah. games. But this one, boy, it... And once again, our this is a snap judgment based on one play... Reading through the rules, looking at the cards, looking at the pieces, trying to understand what am I supposed to be doing, how am I supposed to be doing it, and what is the ultimate goal for me. We know what the goal is, but it how do I get there? How do I get from A to B? Yeah. It's a game where, <laughs> again, I, I don't know if the Carthaginians are going to have a good time playing this half the time. Well, and, and we made this comment. We do a lot of talking during our plays. <laughs> we end up talking probably for... Playing for 20 minutes, and then we talk for 20 minutes. You know, I likened this to, and we actually had, there was a counterpoint to the, at the area. We, we likened this to an East Front game. First six, eight turns of the game, the, the Germans are mighty, very powerful. They crush the Russians. They just fall back, fall back, fall back, fall back. Eventually, they start getting more reinforcements, and the tide turns, right? Yeah. In this game, is there a tide that turns? I don't know if there is. Yeah, I don't feel like there is one. So you spend most of the game as as Hannibal trying to do things here and there, but it just ah, you just lacks that oomph. Hannibal's an awesome general too. That he's very good. He's very good. He's the game. best general. You get the most cards with him. And, and you can always activate him. Yep. Yeah, but he's it, but one, you run once out of I troops. Placed them off the board that one yep. time. It took a turn for him to come back, yep. and then he's all the way back here. And he doesn't Has have no a forces. With him. Gosh, that's tough. You you do not get many recruit re reinforcements as the as Hannibal. You do as Rome. You get somewhere between five. You get five. five. <laughs> you get five. And I think I ended up getting three or I four think you'd around. Have, yeah, you have three. Or four. But but as, it's like put them in here as soon as the campaign in Iberia starts proper. You then start getting like two. Yeah. Because if you as you lose control of um, Baetica, as you lose control of these places, you lose that reinforcement. The reinforcements dry up yep. for you, and, and I so did it lose snowballs, yep. and you will get kind of ruffles. I did lose these a couple of times, and I got them back. And but yeah. the, the other thing that was very frustrating for me, I had these three great generals on the board. One of them can't leave Africa, and he's pretty good. He has a good, sizable force. And you eventually started getting in, and I had to start fighting you over here, so that, that got a little more fun. Yeah. But still, it was just a mop-up job. I wasn't gaining ground. I was just yeah. kind of getting you out of what you had accomplished so that I don't lose those points. Yes. So so what did you like about the game? Because we there were some there yes. were some many things there were many things that we did like. Yes. The combat is really interesting. It's dope. It's I've never seen a system quite like it. And it was very fun to do. It was fun, and I also felt like it was very tactical. I mean, you really had yeah. to think, I've got these 
cards in my hand, and you know how many cards of each type are in that deck. Yeah. It's written in the rule book. It's not like you can count the cards, though, because every no. turn you get to reshuffle them. But it's like, ooh, I have this one that I know there's only 15 cards in the deck. Yes. You're most likely not going to have this, so I'm going to try to play this strategically to get you to play your good cards, and then it's like, I'm going to deliver the counterpunch. Yeah. So and slap you around a little the bit. The way it works is you have, there's a deck of battle cards, and based on how many units you have and your general's rating and a couple of other modifiers, you will just, you'll get a stack of cards anywhere up to a maximum of 20. Most of them, <laughs> most of them, I felt like we were sitting around eight nine to or ten. Eight to ten. Yeah. And generally, I felt like almost every time I had an advantage of at least one card. Yeah. I'm, most of the time. I, yeah, your generals were better, especially right. early game for that. Mine had low bat bat battle modifiers. Yeah. But basically, the the cards just say like uh, left know, flank and left right flank, flank. Right flank, frontal assault, probe. It's like a literal battle maneuver. Yeah. And. I have a hand of these, you have a hand of these, the attacker plays one. So I play a I play a right flank. And then, so then in your then hand of I cards, have to play a right flank. Oh, crap. If I don't, I literally can't count you to lose. his attack and I immediately lose. Right. But if I do, I play my right flank. And then you yep. go again and you're like, well, I'll play another right flank. And I hope to hell that out of my nine cards yeah. I've got another right flank. Oh, I do. Yeah. And then you play Frontal Assault, and I'm like, crap, I don't have any Frontal Assaults. But there were some wilds. Reserve, I think, yeah. is a wild. Uh, that's it. That's, and and that's there's, it. I think there's four of those in the deck. There's double envelopment, that there's fewer of those, and it's a fairly powerful card. But it it, it reminded me, that reminded me of the uh, DVD game. Down in Flames. Down in Flames. Because you're, you know, oh, I did a corkscrew, and you have to either do a... A, a, a corkscrew or a and yeah, this is a bit simple because you're just matching that yeah. one. You're like, oh, I've got trying to get away. That I can use to yeah. outmaneuver them and get. This is just match, 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 match. Oh crap! I ran out of cards. Or oh, I don't have any left. Yeah. But how you eke those cards yeah. out of your opponent's hands, like you said, there's the cool strategy. And, and I like, enjoyed that part. Oh, of the Oh, I play a I play a probe. I'm like I play a probe. And you're like I play a probe. And I'm like I don't I don't have another I don't probe. Have, I yeah. play a reserve. And you're like Haha, I well, know and, you don't have anything left. And it, and it was funny too because I let's say I had three probes in my hand and I play a probe, and, and you didn't have a probe, so you played a reserve. You, so I'm like you effectively know I don't have any. More I probes. know you don't, and I have two more. But do you have? A couple of reserves. Or was I bluffing just to be right? Funny. Do you have a probe? Yeah. It's, so it's interesting. I liked I, that, that cat that and mouse tar. Very cool. Well, and then when you lose, you have to go to the attrition table. Yes. Where based on the number of cards that the victor played. Yes. You then calculate some numbers and you roll and you might lose one unit and everybody loses. Yeah, both sides lose the same amount in attrition. One one or two if it's two or three cards and then it starts to get to two and three or four the more units there are and the longer the combat lasts. Yes. Which I thought was very cool. I thought it was a, a neat element. So if you have small forces, you want to end it quickly. And there's a viable you don't mess around. and legitimate tactic where you can just, you play an attack card and I say I, I like purposefully can lose. Yeah. So I don't take a because you're only going to lose. And I'm just going to retreat. Yeah, you're just going to lose maybe one guy, and you're going to retreat. Yeah. Then so, you roll the retreat yeah. die, which can be devastating as well. So the I retreat think die is going to do some. Losses. I think that combat was really good, and I really, really, really enjoyed that. Unfortunately, that's really only a small part of the game. Yeah, a big part is this political control, and the combat again it facilitates your ability to yes. do that, but. I, I wanted the combat to maybe, I don't know, maybe more meaningful, I yeah. guess. And maybe it is the more we play it, but... Well, it's meaningful only in, in the respect that if you're trying to take over areas you want to win and you want to inflict four, five, six losses so you can remove some political. Other than that, it's just, it's, it's a cat and mouse game. Yeah. I'm going to lose one or two because I have six guys. You have nobody. You're going to lose one or two and you're going to be really devastated. Yeah. So it's it's part of it. The other thing I thought I thought was cool historically, those going over the Alps is very very difficult. You're going to yeah. lose. You just roll a die. Two lose guys. A couple guys. And so you're never going to be able to mount a large enough force. Nor are you then going to be able to recruit enough guys to kind of maintain that momentum. 
So you really got to plan that and then you got to have another general ready and you can see here I had another general ready to come down. Yeah. So that was a neat element. I, we need more plays of this yes. to, to kind of register a verdict is my opinion. Yeah, it's got cool siege rules in it. You basically activate a general roll of siege die and the die is wild. <laughs> Sometimes you just lose a guy. Uh, sometimes yeah. you get a couple siege points, and you need three siege points to actually win a siege. But then again, I, I think looking at it, what does sieges really do for you? I don't know that it does a ton for you, other than force your opponent to waste resources. So if you can, if you can take a siege, it flips that over so that that's that's a huge. It's a political control market. It is. It's an, in, almost impossible for them to dig back yeah, out. Very very that's, hard. That's really what those yeah. are, and it gives you a real foothold in a in an area where you aren't so then you can start launching campaigns out of that. Yeah. That's true. Cool. But doing it takes a while. It and does it's a lot of resources expensive to do it. So yeah. you've got to commit to it or just see if you can't bypass it even yeah. when you can. And I did that over here. I kind of I wasted a turn or two and I'm like I got to get out of here. Yeah. But uh, production wise, you know, we we've heard a lot of chatter that people didn't like the miniatures, and it's, it, it was it's too hard to see the numbers on them. I'm young, I can see them. These I things are beautiful. I don't yeah, care the what the you minis see. are really cool. I like them a lot. They, they do fall over quite a bit, but you can actually put them next yeah, to the stacks rather than putting them on top. I like the production of this. I think Phalanx has done a really great job, not only on this, but some of their other Kickstarters. If there's one thing you can say about Phalanx, their games look great yeah. and have great components. The dice in these are huge, huge and chunky. custom, yeah. and it just I, that's just cool yep. to me. Yep. I like them. The cards have great artwork on them, and the board is uh, it's beautiful to look at. Yeah. Beautiful to look at. So overall, I think our initial verdict after our very first play is we need more time with this game. Yes. I don't know that I can I can tell you this is a keeper, this is a great game, it's a bad game. I can't say that. We're going to have to put some more time and effort into this, explore it a little bit more and and kind of see what what happens. Yes. What what we'll do is we'll play some more of this and you'll probably see more from this from us. But I'd also like to hear what you think about this game because I know a lot of people are like, "This is the a best great game." game. Ever. Tell us, tell us why. I, I'd love to hear your experiences yeah. with it. What you think makes this so good? Um, just so I maybe I'm missing something. I want to see. I want to yeah. hear more about this. Well, game. we're not pros at this. We no. I mean, if we're missing something, let us know. But I once again, I think it's interesting. I think it's compelling. We also looked at the other side of the board, and it was a little. I think it was a little more balanced. I don't, I, I, whether it is game balance, it's just different. You had more options to maybe gain naval yeah, superiority. Yeah, you can change naval and, superiority. It's a smaller map. It's a bit tighter. So maybe, shipping lanes rather than just, I can go right. wherever. Maybe we need to play that one to kind of compare and contrast and then give this one another try. But uh, definitely interesting. I just think this is one of those that it's historical. It really follows that, that line of history. Yes, which... Isn't necessarily a bad thing. No. If you love history, you just need to understand that going in. Yeah, and and that's, I'm I was surprised. Yep, I was at How historical it was, considering yeah. how well received this game is. Agreed. Because most people are like I want a balanced game. They want chess that looks nice and has yep. history. And this to me is pretty heavily. Oh, not maybe not heavily, but I think Rome has an edge in this one, and it's a pretty good edge. And they. They're gonna be able to do a lot of stuff. Yeah, that in, Hannibal in, in won't the, be in able the to mid to late to. game, especially yeah. Yeah. As, the, as the game progresses. Yeah. So, this is our first look at uh, Hannibal and Hamilcar from Phalanx. Let us know what you think. Seriously, I want to hear as much as you have to say too. about this game. Tell us why we're wrong. Yes. Tell us why we're, our line of thinking is wrong. Yeah. What did we miss? What should be my frame of mind for the yeah. next time we play this? And maybe if you have some strategy tips too, because I yeah. I want Please. to play this and have some more ability to, to potentially change things. And have some more fun. You know, I had fun, it just it felt like a slog. I was expect for me. I was expecting us to be like, This is amazing. Yeah. And really I'm like, I didn't get that from the There's gotta first be play. more here that people yeah. love that we're not seeing. Yeah. That's all. Agreed. So I appreciate you guys tuning in. I've been Alexander from the And I'm Grant.